Welcome to Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, a podcast dedicated to helping modern day believers live out the teachings of the first century church. This podcast is part of the teaching ministry of Dr. David K. Bernard. Dr. Bernard has dedicated his life to studying the Bible and helping believers apply its message to their daily lives. In Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, Dr. Bernard answers your questions about what the Bible teaches and how those teachings apply to everyday life. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. So a little over two years ago, the COVID-19 pandemic hit North America, as we all know, and government officials started asking everyone to quarantine. And as a result out of that, many churches for the first time began to stream their worship services online. Thankfully, most churches have been able to gather back in person for many months now, but a lot of churches are still streaming online as a form of outreach and seems, by the way, to be very effective. I would say just having done this in the past during quarantine, that watching church from the comfort of your recliner does seem to have some advantages. Um, We can pray, we can worship, we can hear preaching all without leaving home. And many pastors are reporting to us that at least some members are seem to be opting out of in-person worship service services permanently and in favor of online church. So I guess that leads to a question. Is online church a sufficient replacement for in-person worship? And why should we bother with the hassle of getting dressed on a Sunday morning and going to church in person when we could just worship at home from our living room? Let's start with Hebrews 10, 25. It says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. And then it goes on to say, you should actually be meeting even more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. So meeting together is God's idea. It's God's command. The early church, which was a model for us in Acts 2, it said they met. Of course, they met in a large company in the temple, which would be the temple grounds and from house to house. So there are large meetings and small meetings. Even if you can't have a large meeting, you can still have a small meeting. You don't think God had a virtual world in mind? No, I don't (laughs) think so. Now, obviously there was no technology such as we have now. And I will say, of course, technology can be a great benefit. Um, And we've used technology in many ways. Even before the internet, uh, we would record service and people were the shut-ins, we would uh, give them a tape or a CD. And and I would say, if you're physically prevented from coming to church due to illness or, you know, mandatory work schedule, travel, we all understand there may be occasional times that you will miss. That's true of everyone. And uh, we also recognize that if you really can't come because of circumstances beyond your control, we do believe in the grace of God. And so I do believe that In that case, uh, the Internet can be a great help because people can actually get the message and and participate virtually. And I believe the grace of God will make up the difference. But that's a general principle. If if you're unable to do everything you want, then you trust the grace of God to make up the difference. But when you can do something and neglect it, then you don't really have an assurance of the grace of God. And you could backslide. You could lose some of your fervor and strength. And it could happen without you realizing it because when you know to do something and don't do it, it's sin if you neglect. Now, I'm I'm not saying that someone who occasionally misses because of legitimate reasons, but yet tries to tune in uh, or, you know, to watch online or someone who's traveling or someone who's been in multiple services in a row, Um, and then chooses one virtually. I'm not saying they've sinned or going to hell or going to backslide. I'm just saying the principle is when you can do something, you should. When you can't do it, then you can trust the grace of God. But when you knowingly neglect or knowingly refuse to do what is good, then you do bear greater responsibility. And the Bible does teach to assemble ourselves together. On a practical level, what difference does it make? Well, there's an intangible factor of worship, of intercessory prayer, of consecration, of fellowship, uh, the atmosphere of building faith. And so there are many benefits. And we, we humans are social creatures. We're not meant to be in isolation. It's unhealthy uh, psychologically, socially, even physically, and spiritually to be isolated and disconnected. 
Now, I, I do know some people have great risk because of risk factors, and I understand their caution. But I would say you can't live life without any risk. I mean, just getting in the car and traveling is a risk. So I do believe we shouldn't take, uh, we should try to mitigate risk and take all reasonable measures. So, for example, uh, when, uh, when I travel, I wear a seatbelt. So I'm minimizing the risk or doing what I can to avoid the risk. So I think when COVID first hit, we tried to follow reasonable regulations of masks, of uh, they said two weeks to flatten the curve. So go online for two weeks or have parking lot church or maybe have small house groups. So I never advocated that we wouldn't have church, but you can have church in different forms. And so if it had to be in small groups or in house or whatever, and, and yes, online could could provide that. But that's only temporary, local, when it's absolutely necessary. But as soon as you're able to uh, do something different, you should. Now, again, someone who's at very high risk or in a home of high risk people, I understand they will be more cautious. But at some point, you have to take steps to mitigate the risk. But you have to be willing to assume at least some risk, and you have to be willing to trust God. Now, trusting God doesn't mean not using your brain and not taking precautions. You can, as I've already said. I trust God when I drive or fly, but but that's not incompatible with wearing a seatbelt because that's something I can do. Uh, and so I'm not saying just ignore the issues, but I think probably we need to reevaluate the calculus and uh, serving God and coming to church and worshiping together is a very high priority. And we should be willing to assume some level of risk in order to uh, fulfill something that's much more important. Um, and I think we are to level in our society for the vast majority of the people with proper measures. You can still take measures if you wish, such as social distancing, masking, vaccination, whatever you feel would help you. And you can still come to church and still participate, still worship. And for those that don't, I would say, well, you know, uh, do you go grocery shopping? Do you go to work? Do you go out to eat? And maybe you can do some of those things virtually. But are you going to live your whole life virtually? Are you going to live your whole life in the confines of your home? First of all, probably not. So if you're not going to do it for other things, you shouldn't do it for God. And if you are living your whole life strictly in isolation, that's probably more unhealthy for you than whatever level of risk that we currently have. And, and so looking at it all together, um, it's time to go to the house of God. Why should we do it? Number one, it's a command from God. Number two, it has many intangible benefits uh, I'm thankful for the technology that assists us in expanding our outreach, assisting us with shut-ins or exceptional circumstances. So I'm not against the use of the technology, and I'm not against all of us on occasion going online as the best choice under the circumstances. But overall, I would say we all have to be in church on a weekly basis and worshiping God together. And every pastor out there just said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of Apostolic Life in the 21st Century. If you enjoy this podcast, please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. We also appreciate it when you share Apostolic Life in the 21st Century with a friend or family member. Finally, join us again next time as we look at how the Bible applies to everyday life.